Hello everyone, my name is Stephen George and I play video games. Today I'm playing Shadow of the Colossus. Shadow of the Colossus was originally released back in October 2005 for the PS2 by Team Eco, a Japanese development team led by Fumito Ueda. Their first project was Eco, commonly pronounced in the States as Ico. Whether that's a mispronunciation or westernization is up to you to decide. Eco was released about four years before Shadow of the Colossus, which is their second title, and believe it or not, most recent title. Yes, Team Eco has been around for over 10 years and has only two games under their belts. This is not a bad thing. They are working on a new title called The Last Guardian, which is expected to release later this year. So why have I decided to do an LP of this game? Well, my hope is that the LP will answer that question. I played this game for the first time only a few months ago, and never has a game affected my perception of video games so strongly in such a short amount of time. I had always heard that the Team Eco games were common examples of art in video games, so I played Shadow of the Colossus to see if that was true. It was. It, it's like a, a movie or a book that you just have to tell your friends about because you enjoyed it so much. Shadow of the Colossus went from a game I knew nothing about to one of my favorite games of all time. And I'm doing this Let's Play because I have to tell you guys about it. It is absolutely fantastic, and I'd like to show you firsthand. Now, admittedly, some of you won't agree, and hey, that's fine. Everyone is entitled to their own opinion, but for many, myself included, Shadow of the Colossus has proven itself to be a masterpiece of a game. This intro will introduce us to the protagonist, Wander. We'll be controlling Wander throughout the adventure. He rides atop of his trusty steed, Agro. The intro is actually pretty long, but it's very vital to the story, so I'll shut up for now and let you guys watch it. If you've seen it before, there will be a skip annotation that will take you straight to the action. Keep in mind, though, that if you're new to the game, you'll definitely want to watch the whole thing. So let's watch.
行く竜へ行くか。ユールゾルアイオンブル。ユリロコック。アイユジユラコルドロイヤ。オーリック、オーラズラム、カース。イルゾゼリクアツオコ。アムノスクリュード。ラオミズムワープ。Was you a d e a l e s also? View of this is b e a u t i f u l c o l o r Kizado you lola. Is this was I? Oh, Miss Quicky. You are a l o a q u i c k e アルティクリック、イブトリスト・イズ。ハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハ I was to do the war, not in the peace, not war.
Nicola, you do new. Okay, so I'm going to uh, go through a few things briefly before we actually get started. Here's a basic rundown of the plot, in case you missed some of that. Uh, you are a young man named Wander, who enters the Forbidden Land with a magical sword in hopes of reviving Mono, who is Wander's love interest. She's laying there in front of us. Now, she was killed because she was believed to have been cursed. Uh, Dorman, who is the god of the Forbidden Land, can revive her, but only if Wander destroys the 16 Colossi statues. Those are located conveniently behind us. Check it out. They kind of line the walls. Anyway, um, unfortunately, there's no way for mortals to destroy these statues. But, luckily, there are 16 actual colossi out roaming in the field that, when defeated, destroy their respective statues. So, it's a love story. Get it? Anyway, now much of the story is going to remain a mystery until the end, so you guys just have to sit tight if possible. Now, along those same lines, before I actually jump out here into the field and get started, please, no spoilers in the comments. This is an awesome game, and it shouldn't be spoiled for anyone. If you notice anyone spoiling something, mark it as spam. Uh, and everyone else, don't read the comments marked as spam. Uh, I will be removing any and all comments that spoil anything for anyone. Seriously. Now... Um, hey, guess what? Look, I'm Wander. Yay! Now, I know it was kind of a, a somber tone, of, a very serious tone, but this is Stephen Plays, so while we, while we will be experiencing a very serious story, um, you know, you're going to hear me say, oh, piss, as I fall off the Colossi. Now, those who aren't familiar with Shadow of the Colossus are probably not going to be aware that these 16 Colossi in the game are the only enemies. There are no other enemies. It's basically a game of 16 boss fights. Now, we've already met Wander, and we've met Mono, who's not going to be doing much of anything for a while. And uh, we have Aggro. And the game is going to be going through tutorial mode since we have started a new game, so I will be guiding you. Now, if you press uh, triangle, you'll get on the horse. You can also do what I did there and hold R1, and you'll grab onto the horse. This is useful if the horse is, like, maybe running by. Yeah. X is going to make sure that you can start getting up to speed. The horse is also a little... Uh, difficult to control. Yeah. Come on, aggro. Yeah. Now, we can dismount yeah. the horse at any time yeah. with triangle. Yeah. Weehaw! And if the horse is uh, far away, we can call it to us by hitting uh, cross or X. Aggro! Aggro! And aggro comes. Um, other maneuvers that we have. Uh, first off, I should show off the equipment. We have available to us a sword. This is the magical sword. And uh, the sword is going to be very useful because the sword is how we defeat the Colossi. We are also given a bow. And the bow is, well, a bow. You can also shoot your horse, Agro, who is made of steel. But still, he doesn't like to be shot. Agro, come back! Let's whistle for him and he'll come back. Uh, other maneuvers include uh, walking, which you do by holding R1. If you don't walk, you kind of are all over the place, and you're a little wacky, to be honest. Uh, you can also roll. And uh, other maneuvers that um, a lot of people don't even realize are uh, the dive stab, which is very hard to do unless you're way up in the air. The main uh, HUD is going to show you what you have equipped, obviously. It's also going to show your your health bar, which is that red thing at the bottom. And you're probably wondering what that pink circle is. That pink circle is your grip meter, which is going to make sense very, very soon. Now, you'll notice that they're probably kind of small. Don't worry, you can actually increase those. One of the cool features of Shadow of the Colossus is actually New Game Plus. Plus, plus, plus. Once you beat the game, uh, you will notice that you've probably increased your grip meter and maybe health meter quite a bit. You can actually replay the game and continue where you left off with your increased grip and health meters and actually increase them even further, which is pretty sweet. 
Now, to increase your grip meter, uh, you can defeat Colossi. Every time you defeat a Colossi, your grip gets stronger. You can also defeat lizards, which are not really enemies. They're just kind of in the game. And we, we won't find those until um, probably next episode or the episode after. Now, to increase your health, you have to find fruit trees. We look up here we will spot a fruit. You can also hold down R2 to zoom in. That actually works in cutscenes as well. So let's go over here to this fruit. We'll press circle and we will pick it up. And you'll notice that our health bar got a little bit bigger. Not much, but a little bit. To be honest, my first playthrough of Shadow of the Colossus, I didn't eat any fruit and I did fine. Um, it's really not necessary to increase your health bar at all. Uh, your grip bar um, or grip meter, on the other hand, is completely different, you are most assuredly going to want to increase that. Now, the game was telling us a second ago we need to press start, and it'll show us the map. Check it out! It's the map! Neat! That's about it. Okay, now, um, if we get out our sword, and we are in the light, because you have to be in the light for this to work, you can hold circle, and you'll get these, uh, these rays. But they are pointing you in the direction of the Colossi. Or the Colossus, I guess, because it's just one that you fight at a time. You can't, you don't have to take on multiple at a time. That would be kind of ridiculous. Anyway, uh, there's also uh, s different tricks you can do while riding aggro, although to be honest, you're probably not going to use any of them in the game realistically. But you can do them. If you want, you can like stand up on top of aggro, which is neat. You can also hang below aggro and do tight turns, etc., and also fall off of aggro. Um, but the truth of the matter is, whenever I played through the game, I didn't use any of those, and they don't really feel all that useful to me. They're just kind of there to make the game more realistic, or to trick you into thinking you bought a, uh, I don't know, a horse riding yeah. simulator. Anyway, so let's get back out the, uh, the sword here. It's pointing us in this direction, so that is the direction of the first Colossus. The first Colossus is named Valus. He's roughly 60 to 65 feet tall and weighs a, uh, roughly 40 tons or so. He re yeah. resides in the Vallis Mountains, which is yeah. appropriately named. We get up here and a cutscene will show us that it's not going to be that easy. We're not going to just be able to walk up to Vallis and poke him in the eye and kill him. We're going to have to do some climbing. This is where the game is going to use an opportunity to teach us how to do that. We're going to need to get up on that ivy, but since we're awesome, we will jump off and use that as a starting point. We can hold R1 to grab on and the left stick to climb. Once we get up here, we can press triangle and we'll jump up. And uh, you're going to see the grip meter in action before we even get to Valis. So we need to jump this gap. You can kind of see how he's, he's a little flighty, uh, Wonder is. Let's go across this bridge. Jump! Man, he looks like a ragdoll. Anyway. Under this, okay, now we will uh, show you a little about the grip meter. Now, while I'm holding on to this, you can see those uh, those little the, the little white dots, the dashed lines that go around the grip meter, are slowly closing in. That's my grip leaving. If that gets all the way to the very center and disappears, I lose my grip. Now, obviously, not much is happening right now. It's not a big deal. But once I'm holding on to a Colossus and I'm holding on for my dear life and he's shaking me all over and I'm, go I'm like, oh god, I'm going to die, okay, then it's, then it's a problem. Now, you can hit triangle, like I told you earlier, or you can actually hold it. He's not going to do it on this surface. Let's find a surface that he'll do it on. Okay, you can kind of see there. Let me jump back down so I can show you exactly what I did. Whenever you're holding on to the surface, you can hold down triangle, and you'll see the, uh, the circle actually expand. And once it expands fully, you actually jump a little higher. Now, your grip meter is... Um, you know, you can increase that, and you can replay the game multiple times, ten times if you want to. Your grip reader is about the size of the entire screen. That's actually possible. So if we do a huge jump here, we get pretty close, but we can increase, increase our uh, grip meter even more, and uh, we can hold on longer, uh, jump farther, etc. So let's go over here, turn around, and whoosh! There we go. Barely grabbing on. And in order to uh, bring our grip meter back, we just need to make sure we're not gripping anything. So now that we're standing, our hands become less sweaty and we're good. So let's wander up here. Oh my god! Also, another fun thing is that during all cutscenes, even the opening and closing cutscenes, you can move the camera. You can actually move the right stick and move the camera. For the most part, though, I'm going to be leaving it alone. Even during cutscenes, you can hold R2 as well, uh, but I mentioned that earlier. That is Valus. Valus is a big guy. 
The game is still going to be going through, you know, its tutorialness, but uh, that's not really necessary. Now we need to get Valus's attention. Hey, Valus, what's up? Unfortunately, I'm a lot smaller than Valus, so we have a few options here. We can whistle like we would for aggro. Did you hear us? Looks like he's slightly turning. Another way to uh, get his attention and really piss him off is to shoot an arrow at him. Now, you'll notice his health bar up in the top left flashed a little bit. Now, it does do damage, but it's impossible to kill them. Also, um, it's way slow, so it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to, to kill a Colossus using the arrow. Anyway, so this is Ballas. Obviously, he's a lot bigger than us, and he has a big mallet, which he's going to use to kill us. Oh, God! Ugh! Took some of our health there, but we're good. We'll rapidly tap the triangle button, and we'll get up a little bit faster. And uh, let's quickly get the crap out of here before this guy uh, takes us down. Now, our health bar will uh, come back up automatically, so you don't have to worry too much about that. But he's a big guy. It's very easy to get crushed by any of the Colossi in the game. What we're going to want to do is focus on sigils. And actually, that's what the game is going to tell us to do right now. When you're in the light, uh, not only will it lead you to the Colossi, but uh, if you're next to a Colossi, it'll show you where you need to attack him. So if we come over here into the light, right now we're kind of in the shadows. Keep running. There we go. This is sort of in the light. Let's hold this up, and it's going to point us right here. And that's where a sigil is. So we're going to jump up, hold our one, and grab onto the fur. Now this is a minor sigil. There! So we charged up and stabbed him. In doing so, he's going to fall. And that's going to allow us to fall onto the ground. Crap. Oh, God. Get up. Get up. That's not good. There we go. Let's get back on here and do this again. Uh, all of the Colossi are going to have at least one major sigil, and that's where you're going to be able to do a lot of damage. You'll notice we didn't do a whole lot of damage by stabbing him here, but they did fall over. Most of the uh, sigils are on their heads, and that's where we're going to want to get to. So let's leap off of here and start climbing. Onto his buttocks. Go left. Get up there, get up there. And you can see our grip bar is decreasing, so it's very, very scary. Let's climb up. He kind of has, has this little cage here, so we're just going to kind of hold our ground and let our grip come back up, and then keep climbing up. I'm working my way up, you Valis. You filthy animal. Come on. If we can get to the point where we can actually stand and walk, that'll be good. And there we go. So now that we're up here, we can actually increase our grip meter, unless he tries to throw us off, which he will certainly try to do. But you can see the uh, the major sigil lighting up there. Ugh, stab. And of course, that did quite a bit of damage to his health. What's up, dude? How are you doing? You don't like it when I'm on you. Oh, Jesus! We're just going to keep holding on and stabbing. Now, you have two options, really, when stabbing. You can do quick stabs, which uh, could potentially take longer, since you have to continually stab him. Or you can uh, charge up. Obviously, there's going to be different strategies for different colossi. Some thrash a little more than others, so you're going to have to do quick ones. Other ones, uh, you'll be able to charge up longer. You can charge up uh, for a long time on Ballas, but you do have to make sure you're watching your grip meter. Keep stabbing him in the face. Time to die. Maybe one more. Or two more. Also, I'm getting sprayed in the face with that gross black blood. Okay, it's it. You're done for in the head. And Valus goes down in a big splash of black blood. And there we go. One of the Colossi is vanquished. Now, if you haven't already figured out, this kind of lends itself perfectly for episodic uh, content. Uh, there will be 16 episodes of Shadow of the Colossus, and in each one we'll be tackling a new Colossi. Oh god. Oh god, the tentacles. No, the ten- Ah! Oh! Some of you are confused. I'm just doing that for fun. The tentacles always get you. Um, I'm not exactly going to explain what the tentacles are or what they're for. I think it would be more appropriate to wait till maybe near the end of the game uh, and explain what that's doing. After we finish a Colossi battle, we are allowed to save the game. So we will go ahead and save. And after saving, we will be returned to the temple. That's one of the many crazy workings of the tentacles. We will arrive... Uh, very, def well, I guess you can't say defeated because we defeated the Colossi, but we will arrive on the ground uh, half dead. Now let's watch and see what happens.
Just as we were told, since we defeated the Colossi in real life, it destroys the statue that represents it. And now you'll see that Dorman has given us instructions to defeat the next Colossus. Uh, we will, however, be doing that next episode. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it in any capacity, please click like. If you haven't done so already, highly consider subscribing to Steven Play's new video game episode every single day. And be sure to join us next time when we will continue trekking through Shadow of the Colossus, defeating the next Colossus. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.